as well. So are we ready to start? Yes, we are. All right. Well, good afternoon. Uh, if you have been following the national coverage of the conversation about booster shots and third shots uh, in our Confused, uh, we're going to show you what we're doing in the city of Detroit. Uh, and there's no place where it's easier to get that third shot than it is right now. And I'll show you uh, how it works, why you should want it, uh, and how you can go about getting it. So these are the stories that you have been seeing between the FDA and the CDC. Who's, who's eligible? How does it work? Uh, and here's the reason why. The first wave of vaccines uh, really started to, to come into effect in January. So until we got into July, August, September, nobody was sure how long these vaccines were going to hold uh, their protection. And we started to see it six months, it started to drop off. And I give the FDA and the CDC enormous credit. They just forthrightly acknowledge this, Pfizer and Moderna have. But when you first get your shot, you are 96% protection. There's only a 1 in 25 chance that being exposed to COVID will make you sick. It is extraordinary. That's both Pfizer and uh, Moderna. Uh, but after about, 80, after about six months, it drops down to about 84%. So about, you have about a 1 in 7% chance. And now it looks like it's dropping every month after that. So by eight months. So if you got your shot in January, we're now in September, you may only have 75% protection. It may be dropping uh, lower than that. And it appears that it is dropping every single month. That's not unusual as other vaccines that see their effectiveness drop over time and you need booster shots. Uh, and if you get COVID uh, and you've been vaccinated eight months ago, it's probably going to be a, mi a mild case. You probably won't be hospitalized. But Every month that goes by, your chances uh, of, of getting infected are worse. Here's our problem in Michigan. The COVID infection rate is about to go up at the same time the protections are dropping. And this is why we're talking about this today. Now, here's the good news. When you get the booster shot, you're back to 95% protection, even against the Delta variant. Uh, and so we'll have the Moderna data shortly. I suspect it'll be exactly the same thing. But that third shot gets you back to full protection, which as we head into the holidays is something that I think everyone should give great consideration to. And let me show you what's happening in Michigan and why I would encourage you if you hadn't been vaccinated to get vaccinated right away. But if not, uh, get yourself protected on that third shot. So this is the way the national COVID heat map looked in July, two months ago. Uh, and the red areas down in Florida, Arkansas, Alabama uh, were hot. We've seen all those stories. Up here, the light yellow areas, almost nothing in the Midwest and the Northeast. Two months later, this is how it looks. The uh, infections have spread. The COVID has spread from, from the South. It is now up in our uh, area. Uh, that's what happened in two months. Two months from today is Thanksgiving. If this continues to migrate over the next two months, we could lose another holiday season with our families. And I think right now that is a very definite possibility. And when you look even closer at what is happening with the COVID spread, you're going to be even more concerned. This is more a blow up of our area in the Midwest. And what you see is this, that it is spreading from Wisconsin through the Upper Peninsula. In fact, the worst of COVID in Michigan today is in the Upper Peninsula. It came up, as you can see, through Wisconsin and now the northern half of the state of Michigan is starting to see increased infections. Then at the same time, it's coming up to the south from Ohio and Indiana, and the southern border counties of Michigan are now starting to see it. We are sitting right here, one of the few uh, areas that hasn't been affected, uh, Detroit, Wayne County, Washington, Oakland, are, are among the few areas in the state that have not yet been hit. So you don't know a lot of people who have had COVID right now, that's true. Is it really going to be true when we've got the infection spreading from the north and from the south at the same time. 
I can't tell you for certain that it's going to spread, but if you look at the pattern for the last year and a half, we are likely in southeastern Michigan to have a really bad November and December. If it follows the past patterns, that's what we're looking at. And that's why we're here talking about this. Even if you did the right thing, you protected yourself, you got your two shots, uh, and you've been very uh, uh, healthy for the last eight months. What the FDA just did is set out so many categories, they're encouraging 60% of the people who already had the first two Pfizer shots to get a third shot. You saw President Biden uh, get his on TV in the last day or so. I've gotten my third shot, uh, and pretty much everybody close to me is right now getting their third shot because we understand the science. So you are eligible to get a third shot if your second shot was six months ago. So if it was before the end of March, you got your first two shots, you can get the third shot now. If it's more recent than that, uh, you should wait because the first six months, the protection is really very good. You can get the third shot if you hit any of these areas. You're over 65. Uh, you have an underlying health condition, whether you've got uh, asthma or diabetes or a heart issue, any other, any kind of underlying health condition, or you're in a job with frequent public contact. You work in a grocery store. Uh, you work for a police department or a fire department or you're a school teacher. Uh, uh, you work as a sales clerk. Uh, anything that exposes you to the public, you're not home at Zoom, uh, these are folks who are encouraged to get your third shot because we've already seen this in Florida. People with two shots are getting COVID. They probably are not hospitalized themselves, but if there are people around them, they can then in turn uh, spread it. You can get your third Moderna shot. This was announced about six or eight weeks ago if you have an underlying condition that reduces your immunity. So your risk of infection because of any reduced immunity, you can get your third Moderna shot today as well. And so basically what we are doing is making it easy as possible whether you have Pfizer or Moderna and you want to protect yourself for this holiday season uh, to get that third shot. And so this is going to be as easy as it can be. You don't need a doctor's order. Okay, that's what the FDA and the CDC said. You don't need any documents. Okay, you make the decision. Uh, and if you schedule your appointment and walk in and say, I fall into one of these categories, I need your shot, you're going to get your shot. There is going to be no bureaucracy standing in your way uh, in the city of Detroit. Federal government's not requiring it. We're not requiring it. You know your situation. You can talk to your doctor, uh, but you can come in to any one of our sites and get that third shot. You can get it still today. Um, and if you haven't had your first shot, and in the city of Detroit, we're only at 45% vaccinated. The last CDC study is really astonishing. Unvaccinated people are 11 times more likely to die from COVID-19 than vaccinated people. And I don't know how to say this any stronger than I can. In all likelihood, COVID is going to be running throughout southeastern Michigan in the next couple months. It is going to be terrible, this Delta variant to the unvaccinated. Uh, you've seen it in Idaho where they ran out of morgue space. It was so bad. Uh, this is what is coming. Uh, and so if you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated now. It's going to take three or four weeks before you even get your second shot and you're protected. And again, with what's coming, you can get in and get vaccinated today and get your first shot. Uh, but what our holiday season is going to be like is going to depend on the decision we make in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to do a pre-scheduled appointment for your third shot or your boosters, we've got six sites. You know you can walk into the scheduled time at, during the week at TCF or Northwest Activity Center. Uh, and on the weekends at our four church sites, uh, you can call and do that. Or if you can't uh, get out of your house, we will come to your home and we will give you uh, the shot. Um, the Good Neighbor program remains in place only at TCF. And so you can bring somebody in for their third shot or for their first or second shot. 
And if you schedule them and take them to TCF, you get a $50 gift card each time you bring them in. You schedule that at the time, you call up uh, the number and book your appointment. And so the same numbers uh, that we have used all along uh, is continues to be available. And we have nine neighborhood-based walk-in locations. You can walk in at these nine sites anytime and get uh, your shot. You don't need an appointment. You can get your original vaccine or you can get uh, the uh, booster or third shot. So here's what we're seeing in Michigan this week. This is a story today uh, in northern Michigan. Uh, this one comes from Manistee up in the northwest part of the Lower Peninsula, uh, but they are seeing a rapid increase up there. In Lenaway to our west, uh, just in a week, their COVID cases are up 11%, and you just saw Beaumont announce their ERs are already nearly full in the outlying suburban areas, and we haven't started to get hit. These are the early signs of uh, what we know is coming. And so don't wait until the lead story on the news are the um, ICU beds that are full in the hospital. Let's come in now. There's no appointment. Somebody told me they went in yesterday. They waited two minutes, uh, got their third shot, and got out. You will be in and out in no time, and you'll be protected through this next wave, and hopefully by next spring, we can finish off this Delta variant once and for all. But for right now, I just want to protect Detroiters for the wave that's coming and this holiday season. With that, I'll turn it over to the health director who's done such a great job throughout this process, Denise Fair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we have now, as the mayor mentioned, we vaccinated 45% of Detroiters. And, um, we should be proud of that. I know we have a long way to go before we get to 70% community immunity, but we are headed in the right direction. We are now at a high rate of transmission, which means that more people every day in the city of Detroit are getting COVID and the Delta variant is spreading rapidly and it's not slowing down. Um, the vaccine um, has been available since the early part of this year and we know that without a vaccine you are not protected and you are more likely to have a severe case of COVID and go to the hospital and we don't want that because our goal is to keep you safe. Our goal is to keep you protected. And as we um, head into the colder months, you know, the holidays are coming, we're gonna be spending more time indoors with our family and our friends. I'm encouraging you to get your vaccine now, get the shot. Um, you've had multiple opportunities to take the time to get the vaccine and the time is now. Um, and we do know that again, if you're indoors, uh, COVID is, is easily, um, uh, uh, transmittable. And so we do encourage you to, to get the vaccine. Of course, we encourage you to wear your mask at all times. This recommendation has not changed, um, but we do know that if you are indoors in a public setting to wear your mask, whether you are vaccinated or unvaccinated. Um, we've said before that Detroit is going to be a city uh, that has provided equitable access to this life-saving vaccine, and we have. Um, and so as the mayor mentioned, there are multiple locations, whether you want to go to a church or a rec center or the Northwest, uh, the Northwest Activity Center that is available to you. We just need you to make the right choice, take charge of your own health and keep you and your community safe. Of course, if you have questions, feel free to give us a call. We have nurses um, that are able to answer all of your questions by giving us a call at 313-876-4000. Again, 313-876-4000. Um, ask if you, uh, please ask us if you have any uh, questions or concerns. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the mayor. We've got a second announcement today, which is something I've been working on uh, for weeks. Uh, but when John Hill was the chief financial officer, he had this idea that the city of Detroit, I think we're the first city that's done this, would, would create a position of called chief development officer, which is something that hospitals and, and charities are much more familiar with. But the person would raise money from philanthropic and other organizations. And uh, Ryan Friedrichs held that job for a period of time, then uh, Serene Abu Chakra. Uh, that team has raised more than a billion dollars in outside funds for the people of the city. A lot of the work you've seen done on streetscapes, all kinds of help for the homeless, all kinds of uh, assistance 
uh, during uh, the COVID pandemic to keep small businesses afloat. It was one program after another, and it has been absolutely essential uh, to Detroit's recovery. Uh, I wanted uh, the next chief development officer to be somebody of national stature who could walk into the largest uh, charities in America, be immediately welcomed. And as far as I was concerned, uh, there was only one choice. Uh, we have living in our city uh, a woman by the name of Juliana Smoot, who is probably one of the most successful fundraisers in America's history. She was the chief fundraiser when a senator by the name of Barack Obama declared for president and led the fundraising for President Obama's first election. She co-chaired two inaugural committees. She was social secretary uh, at the White House uh, and is respected uh, in every corner of America. And she was living down the street. And so uh, Jay Rising, our CFO, and I reached out and approached her and said, uh, is there a point at which, instead of spreading yourself across uh, a lot of projects across America, you could devote your energies uh, to uh, finishing the job uh, of rebuilding this city. Uh, and we are extremely pleased uh, to bring somebody of this kind of national prominence uh, to this position. And so I'm very happy to welcome to uh, Detroit our new Chief Development Officer, Juliana Smoot. Juliana? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I, you will see, I don't love talking to the press and so none of y'all follow up with me. Um, I am so, so honored and excited to be a part of this great team that Mayor Duggan has put together and all the great work that has happened before he called me and asked me to join the team. As he said, I've spent my life reaching out to national folks and working at a national level, which has been great fun. But I am excited to work with this team and as a Detroiter myself now to make Detroit a world-class city, which I already think it is, as many of you all do, and help my fellow Detroiters um, make a better place for their families and get more of our people to come back here. Um, the city's already done great work with local Detroit, Detroit partnerships, uh, statewide and national uh, partnerships, and I'm just looking forward to expanding that. So thank you, and thank you for the opportunity, Mayor. And on a final note, before we open it up to questions, uh, just thank you uh, to all the uh, well wishes I've already gotten so far today. But uh, uh, Sonia and I got married on Saturday in Florida at a, at a beautiful family event. Uh, and uh, uh, we're living now at the Manoogian. Uh, and people have already been uh, just extraordinarily kind. And I just want to say thank you uh, to the response that we've gotten. And with that, we'll take any questions. Mayor, add my congratulations. Thank you. Um, I had a few questions, some on topic today, a couple off, beginning with COVID questions or related questions. Um, assuming when Moderna, Johnson & Johnson get approval, will the same process be available yeah. as far as? Yes. Okay. So I, I anticipate uh, that Moderna will get approved on a more broad basis on a third shot in Johnson & Johnson and a second shot uh, in the coming weeks, and Dr. Dunn could probably talk to that uh, in greater detail. but. Uh, we're just going to make everything that gets approved by the FDA, we're going to make as simple as possible to get here in Detroit. And as we read more in the headlines of hospitals, uh, airlines, other companies mandating uh, vaccinations, getting rid of employees, and when we talk about a worsening situation, has the city contingency-wise revisited anything in regard to mandatory vaccines and, and the way things are being run now? You know, we've adjusted our standard to what President Biden set forth for companies over 100. Uh, which is that everybody has to be vaccinated or tested weekly. At the city of Detroit, we had a policy that you were either vaccinated or tested every two weeks. We are now raising that standard uh, to the standard President Biden uh, put out. I think mandates ought to be done at the state level and ought to be uniform, uh, but we are following the national policy, and I think that's the right thing to do. So put another way, no foreseeable future scenario where Detroit mandates Again. vaccinations. Again, the mandates need to come from the state. There needs okay. to be a statewide policy, and we have followed every single statewide mandate for a year and a half, uh, but we're not creating our own set of rules down here. Off topic, um, Grand Prix, it was in the headlines mm -hmm. of potentially revisiting a proposal at least by 2023. Do you like that idea? Do, where's it was your in what, I missed that. It was in what headlines? Well, I saw it in the Free Press and others okay. that uh, there is a proposal being yeah. brought by Bud Denker to maybe consider it. I did not realize that that had been out uh, publicly, but I would say this. I, I work downtown. 
when the Grand Prix was in the streets of the city in the 1980s, and it was exciting. You had office buildings filled up and people watching those cars. It showed off the city of Detroit in a way that I never felt like the Belle Isle shots did. So I'm encouraged by it, and for those who would like to be able to go to Belle Isle earlier in the season and have more space, uh, it also uh, eliminates the problem of having to, to set up and take down uh, the Grand Prix. So I think it's a, uh, a very positive idea, and uh, I want to see all the details, but I'm strongly supportive of the direction. My last question pertains to uh, the City Council investigations and uh, Councilman Spivey's resignation, and if you'll allow me, I was at the hearing yesterday, and one of the things that was in the court proceedings with his admissions was that he also uh, connected his um, FBI informant contractor uh, to other council members. Two others obviously still under investigation. Appreciating you can't comment on a pending investigation. Uh, am interested in what you might say to Detroiters who may look at this flatly and say pay to play is alive and well in Detroit. You know, I talked to Councilman Spivey uh, last night, uh, and I know this is a terribly difficult time uh, for him and for his family, and it's a bad time for uh, the city of Detroit. But uh, I am aware of the underlying circumstances that have given rise to this, uh, and it needs to be rooted out. And I've said it before, uh, I do not have a good thing to say about the uh, uh, towing system in this city. It has created a situation that is rife for people to be approaching our elected officials. Uh, and I have no idea uh, whether there is or is not a case against the other council members. Um, but uh, we need to create a situation where we don't have this going on with the other contractors in the other areas. Where we run open, transparent procurement processes, we're not seeing this. Uh, and, and I was very glad that the Board of Police Commissioners took the action they did two weeks ago to make it clear they were getting out of the business. They shouldn't have been in it in the first place, uh, which is a major step forward. Uh, so right now my job, and Chief White and I are now through our third draft, but my job is to put forward a proposal that the towing process in the city is so transparent that you can see everybody who's got the bid, everybody who's licensed, exactly what they're going to charge you when they tow and store, exactly where your car is located when it's towed so you can find it right away and they can't play this game of not knowing where it is while they run up the storage charges, uh, and then make sure that the tow yards don't have any kind of preferential treatment in bidding your car away from you. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on in this city uh, on towing, and, and we intend to clean it all up at once. My last, is anything further on Mr. Spivey directly, given his service to the city and where he finds himself today? Yeah, you know, my conversations with him were, uh, uh, were private, and, uh, um, you know, this is, this is hard. I mean, he apologized. He, he, he knows. I don't know what his conversation has been like with his family members, but uh, he knows this is not reflected uh, well on the, on the city. Thank you, sir. Mary Duggan, uh, congratulations on your wedding. Thank you. Um, I do want to follow up regarding Councilman Spivey. I mean, this is the second councilman to resign this year under your administration. So what are your general thoughts on that, and uh, how do you plan to restore trust among Detroiters? Okay, I don't know what the phrase under your administration means. Uh, no member of my administration uh, has been uh, uh, charged with anything, but um, we have to have a culture in this city where people who want to influence public officials don't feel like they can do it and get away with it. Uh, and if you look at what's happened in this city, uh, our procurement operations, we're just not having any problems. Boise Jackson and procurement department are running open competitive bids, uh, and you can go online, you can see who won them, uh, you can see what we're spending on them. Uh, the exception to that has been the towing because of the history tied up with the Board of Police Commissioners. Uh, and I just think um, the best thing that we can do is shine a spotlight. And right now we've got a group of towers pushing back hard on that transparency and that spotlight. It's just amazing to me after all we've been through uh, that they're still fighting uh, for the same kinds of condition. But we're going to battle this thing all the way out, and we're going to have complete transparency on towing by the time we're done. And uh, how involved are you uh, in the upcoming council races? Are there any candidates no. you're supporting? I have not endorsed any candidate in any race, never have. 2013 and 2017, uh, I do not endorse other candidates in here when I'm on the ballot. 
Okay, and then on the towing draft that you're working on with Chief White, how close are we? Well, we're, we're close. Really, what's held us up now is uh, they they want to take the next step, and it, I'm really impressed with what Chief White is doing. He wants to have an app where if you come out and find your car gone, you can immediately go to the app, see which company towed you, which storage lot it's at, what the towing fee was, what the storage fee is, uh, something that for many Detroiters has been a source of enormous frustration. And so they're, they're, the police department was trying to get to a system of total transparency. We'll have to get there in phases. First, we're going to clean up the bidding process. But second, we're going to get to an app uh, that's going to let everybody know uh, exactly what these charges are. Detroiters understand what I'm talking about on the way a car uh, disappears from a McDonald's parking lot and, and you're out 1000 or $1,200 and you aren't sure why. That stuff has to end. Thank you. Hi, Mayor Duggan. Hey. I just wanted to follow up on one aspect. A number of the questions have already been asked, but has the FBI contacted you no. in terms of their investigation, their no. ongoing investigation? No. And are you aware of who public official A is who's named in the indictment? I'm aware of a lot of things, but I'm not commenting on it. Okay. I wanted to ask. Thank yeah, you. but there's been no communication other than talking to the law department uh, to facilitate the uh, search warrants at the city council offices. There's been no contact uh, with, uh, with our administration. All right, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All right, thank you all very much.